This is a pyro slime. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryan and everybody watching us live on YouTube and Twitch. Yeah, we're back on YouTube this week because I had a few minutes this morning and I went through the arduous process of setting that up. YouTube, fix that. It used to work just great. I could just go live. Not anymore. What's up? What's oh. new? We got plenty of stuff to talk about this mm-hmm. week. We got Mozilla. A little, we're yeah. a little late getting to that, but you know, uh, things have kind of settled down so we can talk about it. Uh, as the show title might suggest, the last version of Hex Chat is coming out. FreeBSD has ended 32 bit support. Pour one out for them. And the Snap Store is uh, doing Snap Store stuff. Yeah. Stay tuned <laughs> for that. What's up? What's new? Jill, you still getting um, everything put together, getting excited for scale? Yeah. It's kind of uh, what you're focused on right now. Oh, it, it, it sure is. It's the uh, actually U.S.'s uh, largest uh, community-run Linux event. So it, it's huge, the Southern California Linux Expo. And I'm, I'm, what I'm looking forward to, uh, Ben, is meeting all the cool people, including uh, Community Tea Time in chat, otherwise known as Monica. She's going to be at the Thunderbird booth. So I'm really excited about that because now she's working with Thunderbird. And we got uh, um, Strider, otherwise known as the creator of Lutris. He's going to have a booth and he's going to be next to my Linux Chicks LA booth and next to my Destination Linux booth. <laughs> so I got lots of people coming in. And I, and I, I think Matthew has um, Glorious Egg Roll coming. Yay! And we also have Empty from chat coming and Mir PPC and uh, Alan from chat. So we got lots of good people. And of course, I can't forget my Steve husband. <laughs> so scale is actually March 14th through the 17th in three weeks from now at the Pasadena Convention Center. And you can use code CHIX on the first page of registration to get 50% off your scale pass. <laughs> So that's one of the things been going on with me. The other thing, uh, in between all the scale planning, um, I've been continuing to play my favorite open world adventure game, Genshin Impact. And I even have, here's a little Paimon figurine <laughs> from, from the game. She's one of my favorite characters from the game. She's kind of, kind of like a little cherub <laughs> in the game. <laughs> What's that game about? You just run around, do stuff? Yeah, it's a it's it's basically an action adventure um open world RPG game and uh you collect characters actually to um engage in battle with everything from monsters to slimes. This is a pyro slime. <laughs> it was the first slime I encountered in the game, so I had to have this little pyro slime plushy. <laughs> but yeah, it's really uh, it, it it's kind of like Breath of the Wild if you've ever played that, and it's got beautiful, beautiful scenery, and you have lots of campaigns you can do to, you know, uncover lots of perks and and extra extra goodies and weapons and and food, and you can acquire people, but you could also just run around the beautiful environment and have fun looking at all the slimes and the beautiful sunsets and the grass. It's Absolutely freaking beautiful game. If, you, if you're into anime as a genre, you would love Genshin Impact. <laughs> Take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> Couple of things I've been playing around with. Um, I've been, you know, I bought that Fire One thing, which I talked about a couple of weeks ago. And uh, just I, there's a danger to just buying stuff on eBay because you're like, what's that? Turns out it's kind of useful, so I ended up having to do a bit more research into it and found a bunch of fun stuff. But speaking of interfacing Linux, go check out the website. Let me know if you run into any bugs, because I had to completely change the caching system on the back end, because Google's like, hey, this site exists now. Mm. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you might have noticed the last two days it's been struggling a little bit, which is good. If it's targeted for, you know, that's what I put it together for, like an easy place to get information about audio, video production under Linux. So I, I'm glad, but. So let's go ahead and hop into 
what we got going on this week, which is the Mozilla announcement, but not the good type of announcement. Yeah, this is always sad. So Mozilla, the makers of my favorite and Vince's favorite open source web browser, Firefox, has just announced layoffs. It's always so sad. They are scaling back development on many projects and are letting go 5% of its workforce. And uh, so that turns out to be 60 employees, which is quite a bit. And um, unfortunately, some of the projects being cut back are the Mozilla VPN, Relay, and other privacy products, including actually its latest project, the Online Footprint Scrubber, which was a paid-for feature that just came out like last week. and. These layoffs are happening on the heels of Mozilla announcing a, a great thing. It's return to focusing development on the Firefox web browser, which I am really happy about. You know, there, there's quite a bit to unpack in the original blog post. If you want to go dig that up, uh, mm -hmm. it makes sense. I think to a lot of us have been paying attention to Mozilla that they're killing off the 3D virtual worlds, too, which I think if you're like me, you're like, Mozilla had, was running a 3D virtual world. What? That, that uh, why and they're scaling back their vpn service which was just rebatched. Yeah. like yeah. that didn't make a sense and uh, for the past couple of years i want to say i think mm -hmm. we've all been sitting back going why are they doing all this like because they were just spinning out all these little things and you're like that, okay maybe maybe that'll work out for you and i was really shocked that they said they're going to be scaling back their mastodon social because they wanted to jump on that because you remember when um twitter was going to implode over the weekend and Mastodon yeah. exploded, and they wanted to jump on that wave. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Mastodon is still Mastodon. It's always going to be Mastodon. But I, I was surprised. If, if they had more than two people working on that, I'm kind of shocked. But mm -hmm. the announcement that everyone was excited about, you know, the part of this announcement, well, hey, we're going to refocus on Firefox, to which yay, <laughs> the internet went, finally. Finally, <laughs> yeah. Really? But you, you, you got to think about it, though. When, when they say, we're going to refocus on Firefox, how are we going to do it? We're going to shove AI into it because that's the new buzzword. Yeah, AI. Yes. <laughs> you got to be careful when you do stuff like that, when your market share is 3.3%, because a lot of that 3.3%, those people are concerned about privacy. You might drive those out. You got to be careful when you do stuff like that. I, I really want them to play this right, but no matter what, at the end of the day, no one has to worry about Firefox or Mozilla hey. going anywhere yeah. for a long, long time, mainly because Google will continue providing 80% uh -huh. of Mozilla's yeah. revenue to keep them around because they need competition. They want to avoid antitrust, which always exactly. puts them in a weird position, doesn't it, when you think about it? At least to me, these are my thoughts. Are, are you really incentivized to take down Chrome and take down Google's browser when they're paying your bills. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. got to be a weird spot to be in. It is. But it yeah. also makes sense. Like, cause you need to sit and think, why have they been just throwing stuff at the wall? Because they desperately don't want to be beholden yeah. to Google. Can't blame them. Can you? No, they want to do something unique. They want to do something that makes yeah. them money. But we definitely have, um, a little bit of sad news. <laughs> yeah. IRC. Who remembers IRC? Is anybody listening to the show ever used IRC? Probably not. Not on a Linux podcast. <laughs> no, no, no. You guys uh, probably still use ICQ. No. Uh, <laughs> Pigeon. <the> Pigeon. <laughs> uh, one else, just all the crazy stuff we used to use. Uh, you know, AOL Instant Messenger. Like, all the crazy stuff. Yeah. 2.16.2 is the final release of HexChat, and it is kind of sad. I, you know, I went and looked it up. You know, on uh, HexChat first rolled out on the scene in 2012 when Patrick released the first version, and uh, here we are in 2024, and one of the maintainers, or the current maintainer, is dropping the final release. Uh, this is just a couple of small bug fixes. There's nothing major here. Not, nothing crazy. But uh, Ting says, like, hey, man, uh, it, this is the last release. This project, it's been unmaintained. He's done what he can just to kind of keep it up and running. And nobody has stepped up, you know, a couple of years ago. He's like, hey, does anybody want to come back and uh, maintain this? And the internet went, nah. He's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, he started working on uh, HexChat back when he was a teenager, but he's moved on. You know, he's grown up, he's got other responsibilities. 
And uh, but fear not, uh, all the data is going to be moved over to GitHub. So uh, it'll live on until the end of Microsoft, which is good. And yeah, I, I, again, I went back and looked at this and like the last update to HexChat was in 2021 when Ping was like, nobody's maintaining this and I'm just kind of doing what I can on the side. And I, I feel for mm -hmm. that. But we were mm -hmm. discussing before we went live. Very few people use IRC at this point, you know. Um, yeah. I'm just saying people have switched over to Matrix or Discord is like the big thing that people have been using and like i i'm mm -hmm. curious as what the next thing is going to be outside of discord because it just keeps moving on and on and on nothing ever nothing ever like sticks but irc famously has stuck you know <laughs> the, even the xkcd like yeah. there will always be that irc user you got to deal with and we we've had a irc channel for linux gamecast for over a decade but i think there's like three people in it yeah <laughs> Yeah, I had signed up when we uh, went to a new server, and, and but I haven't used it since because <laughs> we're on Discord and uh, Twitch chat and Google chat. <laughs> okay, up next, we have FreeBSD announces the end of 32-bit support for future releases. And are, are people indifferent to this, Jill? Are they happy about it? Or are they just like, all right? So this is actually an announcement I was surprised about, but I understand um, why they are doing it. The open source and Unix-like FreeBSD operating system will stop support for 32-bit platforms in future major releases. Um, ARM v6, i386, and PowerPC platforms will not be included, unfortunately, in the FreeBSD 15.0 release. And with the release of FreeBSD 16.0, that one zero that will not include ARM v7. But good news is that the 32-bit binaries on 64-bit kernels will still be maintained through the stable 16 branch to enable you know much easier transition to the 64-bit versions. But just like what is happening with Linux, FreeBSD, you know, is honestly, they're realizing there is not as many 32-bit systems still in use and focusing on development to support them takes up a lot of resources and hinders uh, progress on new features. So going forward, 32-bit support may be extended, although if needed for certain platforms, if, they, if the community said, hey, I, I still need support for for this old 486, <laughs> they might do that. But my my biggest concern about this change is all the old Internet of Things devices out there, like modems and routers that won't be getting updates anymore. But hopefully, you know, people are are, are learning how to upgrade properly <laughs> and get newer equipment. You're talking about modems and routers. People weren't updating them to begin with. <laughs> I know. They're, well, you can update. I mean, oh, I've done can, them but myself. People updating them. No, because the average consumer doesn't do that. I mean, and, you can and, just log into them for them because their password's going to be admin password and update yeah. it for them. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's actually really good because it forces companies to upgrade their hardware to 64-bit. <laughs> so I think that, us, like, if we're positive. sitting at home on, like, our desktops, like, the last 32-bit... Um, <laughs> cpu we're probably talking like northwood pentium fours or like um athlon xps yeah a. yeah <laughs> hey that is old like that, yeah. that is vintage that is retro and um usually the only blip i i don't think uh we were talking about that earlier like i never get into bsd like i've had to work professionally with net bsd but i've never yeah like take it bsd home and like give it a fair shot and try to do anything with it Linux has always uh, filled the need from like my desktop and uh, server type stuff that I get up to. Um, it's just kind of following the trend. I mean, there's a diminishing returns. Like as this stuff gets older, like the supporting 32 bit and keeping track of that, especially when something like that hasn't been made in decades. Um, I get it. Now, let's talk about Bitcoin. Everybody loves talking about Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah, the internet's like, man, Bitcoin's pretty cool. Love mm -hmm. it. Just can't get enough of it. Well, there's been a problem. 
this is not a repeat, ladies and gentlemen. Those wacky snap hackers are back at it again. Uh, this comes from Popey. He wrote it over on his blog, Popey.com. So if you don't know this already, the Snap Store is littered with crypto wallets, right? They're there. Yeah. They exist. <laughs> Nothing you can do about them. Well, I mean, there's plenty you can do about them. Canonical just uses not to. A handful of them are scams and a fake wallet yoinked around $490,000 worth of magic internet money from someone recently. And this is not a repeat from 2018 or 2023 yeah. when other fake apps did similar things. Uh, mm -hmm. Pope has a one shot command to remove all of the known hack snaps because they might have been pulled from the store, but they might still be sitting on your system. And of course, Popey proposes that Canonical try a bold and innovative approach, mm -hmm. very bold, very innovative, uh, to preventing this from happening in the future. Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> Mandate and verify published applications are officially published by the upstream developers. I know. Yeah. I know. That's wild, isn't it? Logical. That, that, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, man, I hope you get some traction on such a crazy idea there. Uh, if that sounds familiar, that's what everyone's been asking them to do since this first happened back in 2018. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's a solid point, but, you know, let, let's be real. Uh, this is a snap store. This is not Steam. You're, you're talking about like a one at most two person job to like take care and verify this stuff. You know, you don't need an mm -hmm. entire army of people to do this. And um, until then, you know, if you're going to be using, because uh, I, I have nothing against Ubuntu, I'm not going to get on the Ubuntu hate parade. I think they serve a purpose in the market. But snaps are dumb. And you're not going to change my mind because I also think flat packs are dumb. Ooh, that <laughs> piss off everybody, <laughs> <Yeah>. huh? <laughs> Uh, do what I do if you are on a system with flat pack or snaps installed. Purge it. Pseudo app purge snap. Also pseudo app purge flat pack. <laughs> Get done. Get wrecked. <laughs> make the entire internet mad because you're not going to sell me on containerized applications. Because once you make the attack vector simple enough for a Windows user to like click on a thing and it just installs, you're going to get people that are like, wait a minute. Hmm. Oh, they'll just install stuff, right? And I'm like, well, let's go ahead and do that. But it does boggle me because i you know i do want canonical to succeed here yeah you know, i i like absolutely. the idea of a curated application store like the snap store is not a horrible idea and it just low yield thermonuclear warhead drop boom explodes every time something like this happens like why are you not betting this stuff, especially like from companies of like, this is supposed to be from this company. It's like, no, it's James in Minnesota version of this. And hopefully it doesn't have anything sketchy in the background, you know, mm -hmm. instead of being like Spotify official app that would take your login and credentials. It should say James from Minnesota made a thing that kind of like, mm -hmm. it should not have Spotify anywhere on it and whatever. And might have, maybe have a tag and be very aware because that, that seems to be the attack factor of you know, yeah. With and, it, and it's easy, and it's very easy to go. Pff, oh, you know what? Crypto bros get what they deserve, and you know what? Maybe they do, maybe they don't. That's not where it stops, though. You know, it, all of a sudden, this becomes far less entertaining when you've downloaded something and plugged in your credentials, be it a Spotify or with anything, any type of information about yourself that requires a login. Turns out, it's not from that company. Then it's not so funny, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. And yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised about yeah. the, uh, but you know, the argument can be made, but can't you just go to GitHub and you can, you can, but GitHub page is not a store, despite what the internet thinks. Right, Joel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's despite a development internet, community. <laughs> we were laughing at a uh, Reddit post on our programming earlier. Um, yeah. Yeah. A kid. I, I want to believe it's a kid. My brain's like, oh, please be a dumb teenager. Cause I remember being a dumb teenager and I can empathize with that. I'm like, okay. I remember doing dumb stuff. They were mad. They got on and they're like, bah, developers should not post code uh, applications on GitHub unless they provide an exe. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have time for your nerd code. Just give me my program where I can download it. <laughs> <laughs> oh Hi, lord dude yeah. I, I, I didn't understand man i'm like 
what? And uh, it, it, this is on art programming. You can look it up. We looked it up before the show. Yeah. And the only, <laughs> like, just that, that kind of blows my mind. And again, your dangers of uh, EXE. Uh, GitHub is not a store, kids. Joe, what do you think about Good Crypto idea. Snaps? Are you going to go download something tonight? <laughs> no, absolutely not. But one thing I, I want to say is that, uh, like, FlatHub, they've actually um, have, have verified published applications now. And I think it would be a good idea for Snap to do that. In fact, I know Mark Shuttleworth has has talked about that in the past. So I'm I'm hoping <laughs> this uh, this will uh, you know encourage them to to start thinking about their security of their uh, the Snap system, especially because Snap is wonderful. It's great for server side. We we need we need Snaps in 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 the uh, Linux ecosystem. And so, but it has to be a place where people feel secure to go to, to download, to use them. <laughs> like Popey has said, Alan Pope originally worked at Canonical. All right, everybody. Uh, it's been fun. It's been real. <laughs> uh, all the all those other stuff, the hip kids say no cap, um, hashtag yeet, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you like what we do and you want to help us out, head over to LinuxEamCast.com. We've got a support tab. We're on Patreon. we got LibrePay, PayPal, and of course, Bitcoin. I'll convert that to uh, hardware. And uh, Amazon wishlist. Jill's got one. Pedro's got one. Jordan's got one. I got one for the studio. Mm-hmm. And of course, we have a merch store with pretty decent merch, too. It's uh, none of the super cheap stuff. And yeah. it's not overpriced because I'm not trying to make money off of it. If you want to wear something with LWDW or Linux Gamecast on you. And of course, there is a itemized list of everything in the studio. Mm-hmm. So if you're ever looking behind me or in a video and you're like, what's that? Yeah. That's what it is. Everything's there. Every, I just added that Mage Well card. Yeah, and, I see um, that. <laughs> even shock replacement for this chair. I've, everything is on there uh, in case of emergency because uh, I can be forgetful sometimes and I'm like, I need another one of those things. And I go there and I take a look. We do appreciate your support. If you can uh, back us on Patreon, you get uh, this live and uncut in podcast format the same day. But we do have a live and uncut YouTube channel that goes out a week later if you want that. But you also get an ad adver- ad free version of the video, which we're able to put out for our Patreon subscribers as a little a little thank you. It's a higher quality video um, than what you'd get on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I don't have any control of what YouTube does to mangle it. Like Patreon just lets me upload the actual video that I want to put up there, which is good on them and. Of course, no ads. Access to our Discord and come hang out with us on Tuesdays and Fridays for Track Media. Let's yes. uh, bring up some music. Yeah, Roll we're going to thank our patrons. And see how many <laughs> you can get this week, all right? Oh, geez. Well, right now in chat, Strider's in chat, and uh, Monica's in chat, and Mirror PPC, and my Steve husband, and Turbo Tree Sloth. And we got our uh, empty Blasphemia and our Theron. And we got our Sea Monsters, David, Darkwing, System T, uh, Turnover, Ogiwan, and Fox Dog, Swine, Piper, and our Chairlings, Rohit, Mir, Steve, Steve. <laughs> There's several Steves. <laughs> we got several Steves and my Steve husband. <laughs> Don't worry, kids. Steve's not real. He can't hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, everyone. We'll see you Bye, next everyone. week. Bye, <laughs> everyone.